morning. David Faber here. Today is Saturday, January 4th, 2014. And I'm going to walk through a little bit of uh, decode on um, a specific piece of information that webpagetest.org is returning here. This is for one of uh, Jonathan Green's um, uh, projects he's in the middle of a launch for right now. And this project... Um, consists of uh, three WordPress installs, a DAP install, and some other MySQL based um, code that intertwines. And um, the hosting company he was using had him on a massively beefy machine with 32 gig of memory and he was getting a throughput of 12 requests a second. And so in the space of oh, less than eight hours I'd moved all the three WordPress sites, the DAP site, or the DAP system and the other system uh, onto one of my servers and um, just the move, no coding changes, uh, we went from 12 requests a second to 5,000 plus on all three um, uh, WordPress installs. Um, now even after moving that, uh, when I go and look in webpagetest.org I see uh, three, uh, two scores that are uh, less than A's. My preference is A's, so we'll look at the compressed transfer first. Um, and this is a font, this is a font, and this is some kind of uh, video player. So for the time being, um, I'm going to skip messing with those because he's in the middle of a launch. Uh, after his launch we'll go back and, you know, if he if you'd like to fix those, uh, we can fix those. Now, this is the one I'd like to draw your attention to, though. This first byte time, whoops, which is you know almost half a second, which is extremely slow. So let's take a look at the waterfall here. The waterfall is just uh, uh, shows you know each object that's coming off the website, and I'll draw your attention to this first line here that's 430 milliseconds, so half a second. <laughs> That really should be um, around 100 milliseconds. For WordPress and flat files, it should be even faster. Um, now, this this entire information here is uh, relates to the first piece of content that comes off a website, which will be the index page. So, if it's um, uh, index.html, then this time is going to tell the time that the operating system uh, pulls a file off the disk and returns it through Apache. <clears throat> Either pulls the file off disk the first time or out of the cache, the file cache, for all subsequent times. So that's why serving flat files just runs blazingly fast. I think my, I think my servers uh, serve flat files at something like 30,000 plus requests a second right now. It's just crazy. Um, since this is a WordPress site, though, what this number really means is uh, since we're running index.php, that tells the amount of time that PHP is used to generate uh, the um, the index page, the first um, you know landing page or front page of a site's um, content. Now, I already know that my uh, database system, which I run a extremely tuned version of MariaDB, which is the version of MySQL that actually works. Um, it's usually um, uh, two to three hundred times faster than, um, you know, well, one to three times faster than normal uh, MySQL. So I know my database is working as fast as possible, and I know PHP is tuned um, out the roof um, because I, you know, er everything else is. Um, uh, all the test systems I run to maintain my tuning um, are all up to date. So what this tells me is that one of two things here is the bottleneck. It's either a plugin or a WordPress theme. Because uh, I know WordPress is running way, way crazy fast right now. Uh, especially with the release of 3.8. Uh, in fact, 3.8 uh, increased the performance um, about uh, 35% of WordPress in the installs that I've been seeing. It's just uh, that did a great job. Kudos to the WordPress dev team. So um, it's either a theme or a plugin. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the bottleneck uh, if it's in a theme or plugin and then uh, come up with a, a quick. Um, we're not going to do a fix, but we're going to say we're going to try to come up with a quick way of saying uh, what the fix probably is and then how to go about um, 
uh, implementing that fix. Uh, whether it's better just to, like if it's a non-essential plugin and that's the bottleneck, you just freaking rip the plugin out. Uh, if it's an essential plugin uh, and it's a WordPress plugin from WordPress.org, that's simple. You just push back the code and have somebody fix it. Uh, or you push back to, if it's a custom paid uh, plugin, you certainly push back to the developer to fix it. Same way with uh, themes, whether they're uh, paid or um, uh, complimentary from WordPress.org, uh, would open a bug uh, with the, you know, the guest fix and push back. So now let's take a look at um, <clears throat> some data here. Uh, shrink your dress profile. Um, and, you know, this data is probably going to disappear. So, you know, if you go looking around at the, um, the, the data here, it's probably going to be gone by the time you get there. So what these data files are, these data files are generated by X, uh, XHProf, which is a tool Facebook developed and released into the public domain, which is just a really quick, um, it's a quick, um, you know, take one glance and tell where bottlenecks are in code. It's it's not meant to you know bring you down to the line, the few lines of code, or the or you know the specific spot in the code to fix. But it gives you a really quick, single glance at where the problem is, and you can make a guess at how to fix it. So let's take a look at here this last piece of data. <clears throat> and um, you know this will probably look like gobbledygook when you look at it at first. Um, in essence, though, what you're looking for is uh, big numbers here, and I can already see exactly where the bottleneck is. My SQL query. Look at this. Um, it's taken most of the time, and this is um, uh, this is number of calls. Uh, the excluded wall time. What this um, are this exclusive wall time? I can't find any documentation on this tool freaking anywhere, but I think what this number means is the amount of time taken to run this entire test. In other words, the test took um, uh, the total test took uh, 557 um, micro or milliseconds, which is 500,000 microseconds. So, which is about what we saw. We saw that the first page was returned in roughly um, um, what was it, close to 500 milliseconds. And so, we know that we're you know the the data matches webpagetest.org. It's a little bit slower in here because it's got to run massive quantities of logic to generate this data. This number here is all we need, though. The exclusive wall time means that. Um, this is the number of uh, microseconds spent inside this routine excluding all other routines. So we can see that this freaking routine here, MySQL query, is taking 20% uh, of the entire time. And we also know that since MySQL query, we already know that um, um, that's a, a, an access to the uh, MySQL database. That's going to put a tremendous strain on the system. So the question is, who the heck is calling MySQL query that is sucking that much juice um, during presentation of the front page of the website? So I could tell, like I worked on a system for Laura Betterly that um, we had some tuning problems with her front page because she had millions of records in the database that she was going after and had to parse through to generate the front page. Now that I can understand, this is an empty site, so there's basically no records, there's no data in the database at all. So this just means it's a coding error. I just flat out, I mean, I can tell you already, this is an ugly coding area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to um, view call graph and take a look at uh, a visualization of this entire uh, call tree. And this is uh, this is actually pretty cool here. You can see that um, um, right here in the middle, there's the here's the yellow path, which is the that's like warning, warning, warning. And you get then you get down here to this endpoint, MySQL query, and it's freaking big time ugly. There is the hog. So now it's very simple to see where the problem is. We're going to go all the way up here. So um, we start come into WordPress here and we start following this big line here. 
to, 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 to see the big, I mean, there's little tiny lines that are thin hairlines and there's this big fat line. So all we have to do is follow the big fat line and these are all um, some kind of op codes inside the PHP um, VM, the um, virtual machine. So we don't care about that. If we get to load, we can't really look at that because that's loading everything. And we get here and we go bang. Uh, theme constructor. So we already know that the problem is inside the theme. Boom. And it's load developer settings. We know that it's um, something to do with the the um, uh, settings for the theme. And now look at this. Now here's where we know exactly what the problem of the theme is. So um, we're loading settings from the theme except we're doing an update option which does a write to the database which is stupid because we're doing a presentation of the front page in other words you should never write options you should never go through um, theme developer settings and you should never see an update option unless you're in the back end um, WordPress admin panel because when you write an option that means that you've got your WordPress admin panel up for your theme and you've changed an option and you say save that's the only time it should say update option and go through WPDB update and WPDB query. So the problem we already know and the fix is that more than likely the theme developer was inept and personally if I had a theme like this I'd doze this um, puppy under and use the default uh, 2014 WordPress theme or 2013 depending on the the type of system that you're trying to develop and do a child theme off that to implement this uh, themes code because it's I can already tell the the or I'd switch themes all together to something else because whoever wrote this theme really um, doesn't understand um, uh, theme development or coding practice now I believe the the simple fix um, you know without looking at the code but the simple fix would be just to um, when you come into load developer settings here, uh, there should be a um, uh, there should be a, gar a piece of guard code in there that says that um, you know instead of just r uh, updating this um, or going through this code path for every access of the day the the um, uh, site uh, independent of what page you're on because this is going to happen on every page which is very ugly. So there should be a guard in here that says only go through this code path if we're inside the WordPress admin backend. And I believe that, you know, that's the the simple fix for this theme if you just had to have this theme. And on the other hand, if this theme has this problem, that means the coders of the theme really um I hate to see their say they're inept or amateurs, but they're inept or amateurs. They, you just can't write code like this and expect it to run on a a production site. So that's the fix for this is to um, me personally I'd strip out this theme throw it away and uh, go to one of the the WordPress um, if I was doing a blog like system 2013 as the theme and if I was doing more of a newspaper system I would do 2014 and just uh, strip this um, uh, strip this uh, com this complete system out um, now let, take a look at this. Um, so this is 18%. So let's take just take one quick look at um, um, one of my sites, and this is a site that's using uh, 2014 as the theme. And let's look at the call graph here. Okay. Now see, this is a completely different call graph. If you notice on the previous call graph. Um, there, there was so much data wrapped up in one spot that all this other information was very uh, sparse because um, it, the way that call graphs are generated uh, is based on the distribution of data and most of the data was distributed in one place so the call graph was much less detailed. So if we take a look at this, so here we're coming in WordPress and we're going here down this um, path here. Now look at this. Um, instead of a hundred milliseconds here, in, which was the uh, in the MySQL code we just looked at, this is a uh, eleven 
well, actually exclusive time is uh, only uh, 6 milliseconds, 5.8 milliseconds. And apply filters is where you'd expect the bottleneck to be because applied filters is a piece of code inside WordPress, a part of the WordPress core that applies uh, filters and hooks. And so that gets called uh, in all sorts of um, situations. So that is exactly as we anticipated. And that's the correct way for a WordPress system to look. Now let's see, there was another um, okay and here's the, oh okay and the, the other um, uh, the other uh, big bottleneck if you could call it that is uh, 4 milliseconds um, which is in the translate and I believe that that's probably the function that goes through and translates um, uh, between different languages and you know if that was a bottleneck that required to be removed um, you know if you if you knew you were only going to deal with English speaking uh, clients then um, you can probably optimize and even get rid of that four milliseconds uh, but that's so small that it's inconsequential and actually um, you know since we're taking a look at that let's go to um, Web page test.org and let's just do a quick um, let's just do a quick uh, speed check or speed analysis on um, the site that we just looked at the call graph data on. All right, so now uh, web page test is back. Finally, it was having some serious challenges. I had to run it a couple of times to get it the test to work, which is, you know, the case with webpagetest.org sometimes. Hmm. So here's what a correct um, website um, that's optimally tuned should look like. All A's here and X for CDN because CDNs will only speed up uh, improperly tuned websites, my experience, and will only slow down properly tuned websites, so I never use CDNs. Um, also, CDNs uh, introduce a layer of complexity that's very difficult to work with because anytime you make a change to your site, if you're debugging your site, you pretty much have to um, figure out how to turn off the CDN so that you can actually see your new results. Um, very, very complicated. I, I just suggest that, you know, unless you're really an expert and um, you're serving uh, content, in countries that have very slow internet access like Africa or um, Thailand uh, never use a CDN it's a ridiculous waste of time alright so now let's look at the waterfall of this site this is that um, uh, last call graph we looked at and it, the first um, um, page content gets returned in 151 milliseconds which is you know pretty pretty fast and everything is uh, cached here properly so this is what a um, uh, this is what a properly tuned website should look like, and really you should only see these long times here. Um, you should only see for things that are off-site, like these are all Google fonts. So you know it's going to take a while for all those fonts to get downloaded. And then the the um, so that's the first time through, and then of course the second time through. Um, you basically you shouldn't see any um, time at all. In other words, this took 2.43 or um, 243 milliseconds total, uh, and basically the, this entire time is just uh, checking the the website against whatever objects like the PHP or um, JavaScript or HTML or whatever, actually not PHP because that's converted to HTML, but the HTML images, uh, CSS, JavaScript files. So the first time through, all those files get transferred from the website over to the, the, the client's browser. And then the second time through and every time after that, everything should, um, all those objects should come out of the um, the client's browser so there should be um, you know basically this should look exactly like this very very low so that's a run through of um, uh, how to take a quick look at the uh, first byte time and I and I know people are going to ask me how do you set up XHProf and you know 
Um, you're going to have to hire somebody really smart to do that. Um, and I won't do it for you unless you are hosting your systems with me because it's just too hard to set up in, in uh, systems that, you know, I have no control over all the software packages that are installed and where things are installed. It's just, it would take freaking days and my hourly rate um, for me to install HProf and get it XHProf and get it working on um, a somebody's server, I'd guess would probably take, um, you know, it'd probably be three or four thousand dollars. And if you host with uh, host with me, it's free. So, um, or yeah, I'll charge a nominal fee to go through and um, you know give you the data so you know what to fix. So uh, anyway, that's the. Uh, the run through of uh, how to uh, take a look at that H uh, XH prof data and tell what the problem is and a couple of suggestions on how to fix it.